Throughout my life, I've been focused on trying out all the things I find interesting. So today, I gathered everything together, and these are all my projects. What's up, everyone? My name is Thomas Passy, and today I wanted to make a new series called All My Projects. And really, I got big on YouTube by making these videos called All My Pets. And I've been expanding everything that I do recently. So I think this all my projects video is the perfect way to show you guys everything I'm actually doing. The purpose of this video is to motivate you to actually pursue the things that you want to try out. And by doing things that you want to try out, like things that you might have a little bit of interest in, you're going to find something you're passionate about. That's really the way that you find passion, just trying a bunch of different things and seeing what sticks. I know that before animals, I was actually doing a lot of work with like sneakers and uh, I had such an entrepreneurial background before I actually found like my passion for animals and once I found out that I loved working with animals I went all into that I started this YouTube channel and obviously it's grown so big and it's gotten me uh, so many amazing opportunities so I want to try to help other people uh, do the same thing so all my projects in 2020 this year has been crazy for me. I'm starting my senior year in college. I go to uh, NJIT. I am a web and information systems major. I started out in computer science and then I moved over to web and information systems. I might go back for my master's in computer science or software engineering. We're going to get a lot into that later on in the video. Uh, really my background in tech and everything that I'm doing right now. Uh, but the first thing I wanted to start off with was showing you guys my animals because that is obviously a huge part of my channel. Animals and technology are my main passions and like I said before I started talking about passion but when you're really passionate about something you really put out the best work and I was so passionate about animals all these past couple years and I did amazing things. I'm really proud of the work I did. My next journey with animals is going to incorporate my passion for technology with my passion for animals in a more advanced way. Ever since I learned how to code, uh, I really feel like I can make something huge and especially in the past few months I was working for a company as a software engineer and I'm a lot more confident in my skills now. So the first thing I did to combine my passions of tech and animals was make these videos and that is an amazing way of spreading awareness for important causes and really just spreading any information that you want to put out into the world. Uh, what I wanted to do was put out care guides so that's what I did on YouTube and uh, I taught you guys a whole bunch of amazing facts about all the animals that I have. And really what I wanna do next is basically that, but on another level, uh, reaching beyond YouTube, uh, hopefully having my own platform to be able to do that. All right, now let's get into detail about each of the projects I've been working on in 2020. We'll start out talking about the animals. And so what I did this year with the animals was focused on getting all of them new enclosures. I redid my whole animal room. It looks amazing. Uh, my chameleon got a new cage. Uh, a bunch of my tarantulas got new cages. The room looks amazing. All right, so we're down in the animal room right now. And this right here is my carpet python. But I wanted to show you guys what the actual room itself is looking like right now. Uh, as you can see, my chameleon's new cage is right over here. And we've got some new tarantula cages down here we've got my hunter and milk snakes cage right here my goliath bird eater tarantula is in that cage right there and if we open this cage you can get a look at rango rango is my veiled chameleon there he is he's usually a little bit scared of my phone so he doesn't really like me coming in here but he's got his humidifier up and running helping him shed and yeah maybe we can actually feed him right now i'm gonna go ahead and grab a worm right here let's see okay i'll grab this one and then we'll go over here and see if he wants to eat oh oh he already sees it he already sees it oh he missed it let's try again oh there we go nice <laughs> It's usually hard to get a shot of him eating, but with this new cage, it's been really easy. 
Um, I've live streamed a bunch of times and you guys love watching him eat. So yeah, this place is looking really good. I've got all the lights on timers. Everything is automated and it's a lot of fun to take care of all these animals. Hopefully we can make a lot of cool videos in here in the future and yeah. Here's a clip of my Argentine Tegu. He's actually the biggest lizard I have and here you can see him eating some chicken. So speaking of cool things that are animal related, for those of you who are new to my channel, I was actually featured in Ripley's Believe It or Not. So if you ever find this giant purple book, turn to page 107 and you'll see me. Let's see, page 107. All right, so here we are, page 107. As you can see, there I am with my Argentine Tegu. They've got my Vietnamese centipede here my goody sapphire ornamental tarantula which is an endangered tarantula from india that i constantly push awareness for and right here is a telus whip scorpion and yeah this right here that was actually taken right here literally in this room and this was back when i had 60,000 youtube subscribers and now we're almost at 200,000. so if you want to help me hit that definitely take this moment to subscribe and like the video uh, I'd really appreciate it. Alright, so now that we talked about animals, I want to talk about my tech projects in 2020. This year, I have gained so much experience coding. For my coding background, I started out learning Python, then I learned Java, then I started doing some web development stuff, so we did some HTML, CSS, and then I started learning JavaScript. Uh, I did a little bit of PHP uh, for a month, and then uh, I got really into JavaScript and then I started learning React. I was actually working as a software engineer for this company the past three months. I was building this application using React Native and we built a really interesting app for the healthcare industry. I'm really proud of the work I did at this company and I'm honored to have been able to help the healthcare industry, especially during times like these where the world really needs that. So yeah, hopefully that inspires some of you to pursue that. If you have an interest in uh, working with computers like I did from a very young age. Uh, I pursued that. I went to college. I studied it in college. And some people might say that you don't need college. And that might be true for some people. Uh, for me, I found that going to college really lined everything up for me perfectly to be able to learn it in an effective way. And I definitely think that college helped me a lot. So I started building this website called Code for Animals and the main point of this website is going to be to spread awareness to animal causes while learning to code at the same time. So right here you can see that I put learn how to write code that contributes to spreading awareness for endangered animals in five minutes. Basically I want to set something up for you guys to be able to learn a little bit about what it's like to code and see if it's something that you're interested in pursuing in the future. I'm going to make a whole tutorial uh along with this and yeah i don't want to show you guys too much of the website but i am coding it right now uh it's in its early stages of development and uh, i want you guys to subscribe to my channel because as soon as it's done i will be posting a video about it to my channel so yeah i hope it turns out cool all right so now we're going to talk about some other projects i've been working on that i think you guys are going to find really cool some of you might find uh some of these to be kind of unexpected coming from me uh, but at the same time, you can't really expect anything from me. I'm always doing something new. So uh, these are the crazy things I've been working on in 2020. All right, so another one of my projects is one that you're actually looking at right now. I don't know if you guys saw, but the hat I'm wearing right here is actually my brand. I made this hat. You can see it says Patty New York. And this is actually just a prototype. Uh, the hats aren't ready yet but I've been working on a bunch of different designs. So I'm gonna go ahead and get some. All right, so as you can see, I brought out some of my hats right here. And this one is actually made from cork. I thought that was really cool. So I've got one of these here. And I've got another one here. I was trying out like different embroideries for it. And uh, this logo right here is like a seven with a line through it. And that makes like the T and P for Thomas Passy, obviously. <laughs> and, um, Right here, we have another one. This one's actually a rainbow reflective one. So under certain lighting, it will actually reflect a rainbow color. So you can kind of see it right there. It's pretty cool. And then we have the traditional black and white hat, which I actually use the most. 
Uh, I don't know which of these colors I'm actually going to sell, but if I do start selling them, I'm definitely going to put the link in the description of this video. Uh, let me know what you guys think of these. Uh, I'm going to be trying out a bunch of different stuff before I actually start selling them, but I would like to get them selling by the end of the year, so we'll see how that goes. So one of my other projects that I've been working on this year is actually making music. I've been really building up my skill producing music on the computer. Uh, electronic music is a passion of mine that I've always wanted to do ever since I was little. I would listen to people like Dead Mouse and Skrillex and I would always be so interested. Like I would always wonder like how do they make these sounds? And finally I started learning about it. I like dived into the world of EDM, taught myself a little bit of music theory, like no formal training. I, I just watched YouTube videos and YouTube video after YouTube video. It's all I did. And that's what you guys should do too. Like if there's anything that you're interested in, just keep Googling it, keep watching YouTube videos about it. Cause there's so many amazing creators out there making tutorials for you guys. Uh, definitely support creators on YouTube. It's amazing what people are doing on here. So I'm going to show you guys a little bit about how I actually do that and then maybe uh, that inspires some of you who like music to look into this even further. All right, so this is where I create my electronic music. And if you look right here on the screen, uh, we could see a digital audio workstation, also known as a DAW, D-A-W. This one is called FL Studio 20. It's amazing, I love it. Another really good one is Ableton, which a lot of my friends actually use. My personal choice right now is FL Studio. Uh, I really like the layout, the interface is beautiful. I love the colors. And I also wanted to show you guys uh, this little keyboard that I have right here. So I'll pair this up with this and then you can uh, play some really interesting sounds. Now, how do you get those interesting electronic sounds? Uh, you use something called a synthesizer, and there are hardware synthesizers and software synthesizers. Uh, right now, I use one that's very popular in the electronic music space. It's known as Serum. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you that right now. All right, so this right here is Serum, and using the synthesizer, you can literally design your own sounds. And if I were to just play this right here, this is a wavetable and that's what that sounds like. Uh, you can easily change little things here and get different sounds. Uh, but this thing can do so many crazy sounds. Like I'll show you an example right now. So you're gonna hear that this next sound that I'm gonna play sounds way different from the first sound that you heard. Uh, so listen to this. So you can see that this thing is so powerful and you can create so many amazing songs with this. All right, so let's say you wanted to make something like house music. We'd go over here to packs, drums, kicks, and then here we have a whole bunch of kicks to choose from. I'll choose this 707 kick and then place it right here. We'll make it fill each four. And then when we press play, we'll have our kick going. And then from there, you can just simply set some notes on Serum. See? Now the drums are only playing over here, but we can easily make that play the whole way through. Now obviously this isn't something really hard to do, but it just shows you an introduction to what music production is like. Beyond that, there's a lot of other things you need to learn like mixing and mastering and adding effects to your sounds. There's a lot to learn here and if you guys are interested in this, I hope it inspires some of you to start creating music. Another project that I've been working on in 2020 that deals with music is building up my skills as a DJ. So I've bought this uh, Pioneer DJ controller and it's amazing. I've loved playing around with it and learning what <laughs> each of these things do. Uh, it's been a lot of fun and if you guys are interested in DJing I definitely recommend you guys pick up a cheap DJ controller from Amazon. You can find so many of them. Um, this one in specific is not the cheapest 
of the Pioneer ones. There's one that's actually a bit cheaper than this one, but it's amazing for learning. Uh, and the reason I went with Pioneer in specific is because that is what most uh, people use. So if you're gonna DJ somewhere else, you will typically find people with uh, Pioneer DJs. Something else I love about this DJ controller are actually the lights it has. When it's on standby, it'll do this really cool effect and it looks amazing in my room. I think it's worth mentioning that I had some music experience before actually getting into producing electronic music. Um, the first instrument I ever played was the trumpet and you guys who watched my Draw My Life video would know that. Uh, then after that I picked up the guitar and none of that really interested me as much as electronic music. Um, but I didn't even know that programs like these existed to make music on the computer. And then when I found that out, I was like, I was probably 15 or even older than that. But if I knew it at a younger age, I probably would have started younger. Uh, I remember that at 15 or 16, I found out that these programs existed, but I didn't really understand how you use them. On top of that, they were expensive. I didn't have the money for it. And now I'm in a position where finally I have a little bit of money and I can start you know, trying out all these things and finding what my passion really is. Uh, that's what I've really been doing this whole year, you know, trying so many things, uh, finding what I'm really passionate about. Obviously, the animals and tech are a huge passion. And I kind of see that everything that I try out falls into these two categories anyway. Uh, so I'm just gonna keep trying stuff until I find something that I really love um, and Part of me thinks I already found that I already found the thing that I really love and the thing that I really love is working with computers on You know making videos that's working on the computer uh, Designing all these software stuff that's on the computer making music is on the computer um, It just comes full circle every single time All right, now moving on to something else. For those of you who are into architecture, uh, I actually got certified in AutoCAD and making floor plans. Uh, I did that for four years. You know, I've been around it all. I've tried out so many different things. If I didn't go to college for like computer science, I would have gone for like architecture or film. Uh, I just had so many interests, but I'm really happy with what I ended up studying. Um, and I think it really taught me how to use a computer to its full potential. All right, so moving on to another project that I'm working on, I'm actually really passionate about art and painting is something that I always wanted to pursue. Uh, in specific, I like abstract art and I think it's just really fun to see what happens when you mess around with paint. And really what I like the most about it is how you could never recreate um, what you make exactly. Uh, so it really uh, comes out like one of a kind and that's what I love the most about it. And I actually wanna show you guys some cool hats that I made. All right, so like right here, this is one of my Bass Pro Shop hats that I just started painting on, just doing random stuff. As you can see, like I put my logo on here and that's, this became this. Um, other than that, uh, a hat that I had a lot more fun making was this one right here. I actually posted a picture of this on my Instagram, so if you guys wanna check that out, you can go there. I put the seven logo over here on the side. My original idea was to actually put this over here, but then I put the passy on the side. Uh, I like how it came out. Other than that, we have this hat right here, which used like a splatter technique. Uh, I think it came out pretty cool. And these hats actually do something really cool. So let me come back and show you guys what they actually do. All right, so I have the hat right here. And then when I turn off this light and then turn on the UV light, you could see that the hat actually glows in the dark. So it'll glow under UV light. And this is just amazing. The splatter one also does the same thing. All right, so let's take a look at this splatter cap under UV light. I'm gonna turn off this light and then I'm gonna turn on the UV light. This hat looks amazing. And personally, I love how the green UV paint came out in this one. So yeah. Something I wanted to say about this hat in specific is that I actually painted it using a shaving cream technique. And I'll actually put a video up right now of what that looked like. It was a really cool experience. 
and they just came out amazing. And now that I'm thinking about it, I'm actually really into sculptures too. I made a wire sculpture of a scorpion uh, a while back and it turned out really cool. So I might look into that more in the future as well. For the future of my painting projects, I want to keep trying out using clothes as my canvas and then also make an actual painting that I can hang up in my room uh, or in the animal room, whichever one, but we'll see where it goes. I wanted to add some kind of sport into this video, but I don't really play any sports. The last thing I did was probably soccer in middle school. So something that's more current is skateboarding. Uh, I've always been interested in skateboarding and this year I was finally able to get an electric skateboard. So as you can see it comes full circle. Everything I like gets mixed with tech and it just makes it even better. So this is my electric board right here. As you can see it's super cool. And if you click this button right here, it'll actually tell you uh, how much battery it has. Uh, something that's really cool about this board is that it will literally recharge when you're braking. So this is the remote right here and literally you just pull back and then it'll start braking when you're going down a hill. And at the same time, it'll recharge the battery. Uh, you can go super fast on this thing way faster than you probably should be going, honestly. Sometimes it's kind of scary how fast this thing can go. Not only can this board hit a speed of over 40 kilometers per hour like nothing, but it also sounds super cool doing it. So listen to this. And there you go, that's 40 kilometers per hour right there, 49. That is the craziest thing ever. And then we'll break. And then it just stops instantly, so look. All the way up to 49 and then break it's like almost instant and you can go off the board like if you break super fast you go flying off the board so you have to learn how to use the brakes they're just super powerful but yeah if you guys are interested in doing something more active and you like tech and skateboarding there you go get yourself an electric board another thing i really enjoy doing is indoor skydiving but i might do a live stream soon where we can talk about this so i'm gonna save it for another time all right, so those are pretty much all the projects I'm doing in 2020. I don't know what else the year has in store for me, but if you guys wanna find out, follow me on Instagram, subscribe to this YouTube channel, and thank you guys for watching. I hope this inspired some of you to do more projects, um, try out a bunch of new things, and ultimately find your passion. So yeah, thanks for watching.